real in the script. Yeah. It's yeah. quite an intense, immersive experience. Like I felt yeah. like it was a, a real person calling out to me through the script and kind of pleading with me and I, I felt really sorry for them. It was the characters in the page trying to live but they can't live because they're characters and they're stuck like this is them. And it was like, when I was reading it, I was like, it was quite emotional actually. <laughs> listen to me speak with a capital I, Lawrence. Pay close attention now and listen to her dutifully reading the script. She has vanished into nothing. No, excuse me, not nothing. She has vanished into a single line. In a collective consciousness, I can feel him looking at us, Rosa. He doesn't read these words without a tinge of irony, or at least a sustained, quiet scepticism. I admit your words have been put into your mouth. But Lawrence, you are more than the sum of your words. As a reader, you go into it with your preconceptions about what a body is and for whom this body acts as a vessel. They're talking about kind of pushing boundaries outside of the script, but the script's already been predetermined, so they can't push outside of the boundaries, but they really want to. Our own kind of individual decisions as actors would have an impact on their lives. It's about how they have their own consciousness, and then they're using people, but they feel limited by that. The script is blind to itself. It doesn't know what its outcome is going to be. You continue to think about what the characters are doing, like they're still continuing the story. Once they've been resurrected, are they more than the script? Rosa. Yes, yes, Lawrence. Rosa, Rosa, I can see you. I can see you. I too have eyes too. I'm here. That is a pretty cool concept, to be honest. I, I, I enjoyed that. Scripting for the indeterminate, the unknown, the unpredictable. Are you viewing it? Are they viewing you? It's very meta. Yeah. <laughs>